Good morning, give me a minute. I'm starting early, I did not know. Said it 10 times posted, good morning. Glad you're here with us. Bonnie decided it was time for me to take my vitamins as we're getting ready to go here. Uh, good morning. Yes, we are early uh, because I got to get to Grace Lodge this morning and uh, stuff that I, and it's just, can't keep up with all of it, guys. Yesterday was terrible. I was behind all day long and I'm trying to get caught up, but there just aren't enough hours in the day. And um, right now, this is a little longer, and so I'm here. Yesterday, I, I tried to record it, but I wound up finishing the recording about the time it was supposed to start, and that seemed fruitless. So I'm just starting. Good morning. Glad you're here with us. Spend a little time in God's Word. Those joining us uh, right now on time, uh, early, I'm glad you're here. Um, Others will join us as we're going along, and of course the recordings are here all day long, uh, every day and any day. You can go back and look at any anyone you want to see. But this is why it's important to uh, click, like, share, and be part of our group so you get the notifications when I send them out um, in, inside of the group. Um, over on YouTube, it's going to be at the same time. It's going to be at 11 o'clock because it's an upload of this video. Um, I just don't have the energy in the evenings right now to record. Tomorrow I have a doctor's appointment too, but I think I'm going to be okay there. Timing-wise, I think we'll be okay there. So, uh, good morning. Uh, it's another day in Wisconsin. Snow coming tonight, supposedly. Um, although, you know, originally it was supposed to start during the day sometime, then it was evening. Now it looks like it may not even start till 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, maybe it just won't even start, and, and that's okay too. That's okay too. The, some meteorologists um, have suggested. I think, uh, I think actually over there in Michigan, Mark Torregrossa suggested that um, March first and second showed us coming in like a lion, and so we, which was kind of my hope. Um, so we might, we might, well, he, even he said that the models are indicating that, well, the temperatures might remain cooler, um, precipitation is going down and, and um, not extreme cold and, and the likelihood of a lot of snow, although always possible, it's March, um, is, is diminishing. Um, and of course, you know, once we get done with March, we're in April and then you get rain, right? April showers. I, you know, my mother used to say that the uh, Palm Sunday was the Sunday to watch because if it rained on Palm Sunday, you had rain for the next six weekends, um, which I think takes us into Memorial Day. My wife is very much opposed to this because when the snow is gone, we'll have mud, and then the rain will be mud. But you're going to have mud in April no matter what. And in May as well. So now who's messaging me? Oh, snowstorm moves in. My weather app is informing me. Yeah, moves in. Not today. Um, anyway, good morning. I'm glad you're here with us. Let's see who's managed to catch us here as we're starting early on this Thursday morning. Um, oops. I jumped. Uh, Jerry, good morning. 32 degrees. Okay. Uh, and there's Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you. Verna, good morning. Jill and John, good morning to you. Um, you know, one of the things that makes this longer is that I do this thing in the morning, but I think it's important. I mean, I like to say hi to you guys, whoever joins me. I appreciate the, uh, the time that you take to spend with me. Oop, we almost dropped out there for a second. Um, Satellite's been a little goofy today. Um, moments, not full things. And so we'll just have to, if it blanks, just wait. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm not going to drop the stream. Oh, coffee good this morning. All right. Um, well, and so good morning to you guys who are here uh, with me right now early and to those who join us. A little later this morning, uh, as we are going along here, are those watching um, either at home or, or at, sorry, either here on Facebook later today uh, or over on YouTube. Uh, remember, like, share, join our little our little daily devotional group here on Facebook, or uh, like and subscribe on the 
YouTube channel. So, all right. Oh, there's Bonnie popped in. She says, blah, cloudy, gray, breezy, 31. Yeah, it's just kind of, it's a not winter, not spring kind of day. You know what I mean? All right. Let's get into this if you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295. See, it's already 830. I guess I wouldn't have had to start quite... Well, anyway. Uh, we're coming up to our normal time. Uh, if you have the... Yeah, do you have it, if you, uh, see, I'm tired. It's just not going. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, daily prayer. For individuals and family, the morning order, which I have, as always, here in my treasury of daily prayer as we begin early on this uh, Thursday, March 8th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm 28, verses 6 through 9, Psalm 28. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy, the Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts and with my song I give thanks to him. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. O oh, save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Lord. This is a psalm of praise, obviously. Blessed be the Lord. Even though we're all the way into verse 6 before we hear that. Hey, Renee, good morning to you. Um, he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. And he does. He hears the prayers of the faithful. And I asked the catechism kids one day, and it's it's fun to ask these guys the question because they really don't know a lot. And then and then you get a fairly if I can get an answer out of them, you get a fairly straightforward and honest answer. Um, I said, "Do you think that God hears the prayers of the unbeliever?" And we we discussed it a little bit. And we looked at a few scripture verses, and and we we came up with the result of yes, he does. He just doesn't respond to them, right? Um, he doesn't respond to the prayers of the unbeliever, but he does uh, to the prayers of the believer. So he hears our pleas for mercy, um, and he is our strength and our shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am helped. I give thanks to him. He is the strength of his people, right? And he is. I, you know, we, we read last year all the way through the, through the texts in the daily lectionary uh, of the Old Testament. How many times did... God's people uh, move uh, in battle towards an enemy or it were attacked by an enemy. And, and the victory was won not by the strength of the man, but by the strength of God. God wins our battles. He fights for us. If, if we are with him, he is with us. All right, let's go on to our, our reading for today. We're in Mark again, chapter 7. Verses 24 through 37. Hmm. I'm just looking at the writing that's for today. Not the Lenten catechesis, that's different. But, yeah, it's an interesting one. Not necessarily helpful for us. Mushtak, good morning and good evening to you, brother. Looks like Connie and Robin are hiding in the background somewhere there as well, since Bonnie said hi to them. So hi, Connie, and hi, Robin. Um... Just refresh. Oh, there's coming. Just refreshing my screen to get up. Oh, what? Just there. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 Yep. 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 Yeah. Good morning, early birds. Yeah. Yeah. We had to get going here. Um, Mark 7, 24 to 37. Let's read through this. Oh, it's not that long. 
And from there, he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Seraphonician by birth. And she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, Let the children be fed first. For it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For this statement, you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears and after spitting touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened and his tongue was released and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged him to tell no one, but the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was talking about this event. It, it, and, and the 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 um, Syrophoenician woman. In another place, she's a Canaanite woman. She, it occurs, I think, in all three of the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I don't know if it's in John. I don't think it is. Um, you know, there's, there's a resource. Well, first, when you don't see it right off the bat, maybe there isn't. Ah, here it is. There's, there's a reason. There's these. Uh, this is everybody gets a Bible, right? Everybody likes to buy a Bible, but this is kind of a neat thing. Now it's it's done in the RSV translation, but it's a synopsis of the four Gospels, and inside of it are laid out. I don't know. If, yeah, you're getting just a blank page. I think. Try to get back a little bit. It's laid out in columns according to the four Gospels, and it's laid out according uh, so that you can see where they line up, where where the narratives of each one line up and um this is fairly early on so this is mark chapter seven it's keyed off of matthew though which in my mind is wholly appropriate uh for it to be keyed off of matthew because um i happen to think that uh matthew is the is primary Ma matthew is the first first of the gospels that was written um and then, and then Mark and Luke, um, Mark being being written in the narrative of Peter, Luke being written in the narrative of um, in chapter seven. Written in Mark, Mark, Mark being the narrative of Peter, and Luke being the narrative of Paul. Um, so obviously, um, those two are written later than Matthew. And then Matthew was a tax collector, so he was a learned man. He had, I think he was taking notes while Jesus was talking uh, and doing things. And so here we have, okay, here we go. Uh, Mark 7, 24 to 30, um, uh, which is the Seraphonician. So that's in Matthew. Yeah, no, I was wrong. It's in Matthew and Mark, but it's not in Luke and John. Um so there you go. That answers that. And then the narrative of the of the uh, deaf man, deaf and dumb man, the, the one who cannot speak, is in Matthew and Mark as well. So it's kind of interesting the way those things are are patched together. Oh, now my watch says it's a deadly winter storm. Anyway, you get a, you know 
Before there were computers, this was the kind of stuff that was used. A, a pastor doesn't have to research everything because it's some of the materials are out there. You've got to be careful of what you're reading. But um, I was thinking about it as I was reading this, and it's talking about where, where Jesus went. From there he rose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Well, where was he coming from? Right? And, of course, I can just look back at yesterday's reading and see um, that he was by the by, by Gennesaret by the Gerasenes. Um, but, you, you know, you, there are maps out there where people have traced out the route for you. And, and, you know, it's not a matter of just saying, okay, he was here, and now he's here, and he went there, um, because you have to know what the predominant travel routes were, because you don't... If we have a phrase in Wisconsin, you can't get there from here, um, because quite often roads don't go from point A to point B. They... They meander and go around. Uh, highway 51, Highway 39 is is a is kind of the uh, contrary to that, right? If you want to get to Madison, Madison from here, it goes straight there, right? Um, but if you think about Highway uh, 69 over in Michigan or Highway 9094 here in Wisconsin, it doesn't go straight. It kind of they kind of curve, right? They're going from like 69 is coming up from. Um, the area of, of uh, where Train College, um, uh, can't think of the city there, but, but coming up out of Fort Wayne and, and crossing the Michigan border, but it's headed for Port Huron, but it doesn't go straight there. It arcs through the state. Um, 1994 goes from, from uh, Madison uh, to Minneapolis, but it doesn't go in a straight line. It, it arcs as it goes there. It goes through other places. So, you know, you don't really know you, you've got to know these other things and learn all those things, and they aren't necessarily biblical. Why did I talk about that? I don't know. I'm just an aside. I'm tired and my brain's going places. All right, so let's talk about the text. This, this woman, Seraphonician uh, by birth, a Gentile, right? So she's not a Jew. Um, and Seraphonicia um, is, is also known, she's, in another place, she's known as the Canaanite woman. Or the Sidonian woman, um, and so she's she's from uh, the northern kingdom, if you will. Um, so she's not a Jew. Um, she doesn't believe in God Most High, right? She's not. She's not. Hey, John. Good morning. Oh, and there's Ann and Deb and Grant, and hello, Janet as well. Um, she doesn't know. Uh, she doesn't know the God Most High. She doesn't know the God of the Jews, and yet here she is, and Jesus goes into this house that she's in, um, not wanting anyone to know, right? Again, in Mark's gospel, Jesus is trying to hide as much as he can, but the more he tries to hide, the more people point him out, show him off, and talk about him. Um, but this woman knows, finds out he's there and finds him, and says she's got a daughter who has an unclean spirit. And it's interesting because in this text, um, both words are used, unclean spirit and demon, okay? I've said to you before that an unclean spirit is a demon, and a demon is an unclean spirit, and that, that these are um, the fallen angels, the ones who fell with Satan, and they uh, tempt and affect and uh, challenge us with temptation all our lives, and they are the ones who are causing misery to many people in uh, Jesus' time. I think they do today, too, but we just don't understand it. We don't perceive it. Um, a good friend of mine, Robert Bennett, had, had written books, two books, uh, Afraid and I Am Not Afraid, um, on demon possession throughout the world. He, he'd spent some time in Madagascar um, and saw a lot of it. And uh, then he wrote a book on it about here in the U.S. And, and not everything, right? Mental illness is mental illness, but some of these things, you know, I am legion. So... Her daughter is suffering from an unclean spirit. And she comes and begs him to cast the demon out of her daughter, right? So we had both words. Um, whose little daughter had an unclean spirit. Came down, came and fell at his feet. And uh, she begged him to cast out the demon. Cast the demon out of her daughter. Um, but Jesus says to her, now this is interesting. Jesus says to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And that's true. That's true. 
he's talking about Israel, he's talking about the Jews, he's talking about the Israelites, and he was sent to the Jews, right? The, the promise of the Messiah was given to the Jews. Um, they reject him, uh, which brings it then to the, to the Gentiles and to all of creation. Um, but she says to him, this is, this is, this is amazing thinking, right? Um, and these are, this is a, in a simple, this isn't a parable. This is a conversation. And yet it's parabolic in its form, right? Because when he's talking about the children and he's talking about feeding, um, and bread, um, he's not talk. He, he's not talking about children, or well, feeding maybe or bread. Um, he's talking about um, he's talking about the gift of salvation and the work that he's doing. Um, and she says, "Yes, Lord, you're right. The children should get their food first, and then the dogs. Right? The dogs get the leftovers, the scraps, if they're lucky. Not my dog." But um, she says, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's breadcrumbs. Now, the word dog here isn't cute little household puppy, right? This isn't, this isn't my chihuahua. Um, this is, this is, this is the, the dogs that wander the streets. This is the dogs that don't have a home. Because right? that's what the Gentiles are in the eyes of the Jews. They have no eternal home. And so she says, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And that's true, isn't it? I mean, both literally, right? The, the children are eating at the table. And, and you guys, I mean, if we're really talking, if we're talking in Fantos, if we're talking the little ones in the high chairs, right? And the food's everywhere. And the dogs are getting some of it, right? If the dog's lucky, the baby gets put down on the floor and then the dog licks the baby clean. That would be un unsanitary. Why did you even say that? But... It's true. The dogs under the table do eat the children's crumbs. She, at some level or in some way, understands that God's grace is so immense that even a crumb, and Paul says this too, even a crumb, even a morsel of his grace is more than sufficient for us. More than sufficient for us. It's just a scrap, something that's cast off, something that's waste material, is more than sufficient for our salvation. Let the children be fed first. And he says to her, for this statement, which is a statement of faith, I, Lord, whatever you can spare, yes, feed the children first, but if you have, just as you're cutting the bread, if a crumb comes off, let me have that. For this statement, you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. Her daughter's healed. Her daughter is made well, made complete again. And she went home and found the child lying in the bed in the demon room. Even a morsel is sufficient. Then he returns from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis, so he's back down, heading back down towards Galilee, to the sea, and, and they, they brought him a man who was deaf and had speech impediment. They begged him to lay his hand on him, and taking the man aside privately, put his fingers into his ears. Now, and, and after spitting, touched his tongue, uh, and, and looking up to heaven, he said to him, Ephatha, be opened. That's Aramaic for be opened. Um, and it's unclear that Jesus spit on his finger and used the water of his own body to correct the creation, touching the man's tongue. Or did he spit to the side as in cast out the demon? The man can't hear and can't speak. So did Jesus indicate to him that he should spit out the demon, that the demon should be spit out since the man is deaf? Perhaps the demon can't hear? Um, I don't know. There's a lot of speculation. The important thing here to take away from this is that, that God in Christ restored broken creation of this man, giving him back his hearing, and he touched him. He touched his ears. He touched his uh, touched his tongue. Um, or after spitting, did he touch his own tongue? 
See, the Greek would clear this up because the Greek would have um, endings that would help us in, in cases that would help us understand that better. I'm not looking at it because that's not the important thing. The important thing is that he he healed this man, gave him back his hearing, gave him back his speaking, and people people saw and says he said he does all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the and the mute speak. And beyond that. Jesus told this man, now don't, and, and those around, don't tell anyone about this. But again, those who know what Christ is and what he has done and, and, and have his gift, that crumb of grace that we've received, can't do anything but talk. Right? If you hold back on what your faith has done for you, that's too bad. Because a believer can't help but talk can't help but declare the excellencies of him who has taken you out of darkness into, into his marvelous light. He who by his death and resurrection has saved you from sin, death, and hell. He guards you and keeps you in the one true faith through his word and his sacraments. He guards you and protects you from the temptations of the, the demons, the unclean spirits, because they still prowl the earth looking to steal us away from Christ. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. O oh Lord, let your merciful ears be open to the prayers of your humble servants and grant that what they ask may be in accord with your gracious will through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I pushed a button and I pushed your own button. Our Lenten Catechesis. Lenten Catechesis, continuing on the second article of the Apostles' Creed coming out of the, out of the um, large catechism, right? Luther, Luther created the small catechism for the instruction of uh, the simple and, and the basic parts of the faith for, for well, I'm going to say for children, but for everyone. And then once you've mastered that, which no one really ever does, but, but once you've been through it and you're catechized, the large catechism expands and grows that intended first for pastors after he had uh, done his visitations and then for the laity as, as we've grown in faith. So the large catechism here, um, section 2, paragraphs 31 and 33. Um, we'll say the creed in a moment, so I'm not going to repeat the second article here. He says then, but of course that's about Christ. Let this then be the sum of this article. The little word Lord means simply the same as Redeemer. It means the one who has brought us from Satan to God, from death to life, from sin to righteousness, and who preserves us in the same. But all the points that follow in this article serve no other purpose than to explain and express this redemption. They explain how and by whom it was accomplished. They explain how much it cost him and what it's he spent and risked so that he might win us and bring us under his dominion. It explains that he became man, was conceived and born without sin, from the Holy Spirit and from the Virgin Mary, so that he might overcome sin. Further explains that he suffered, died, and was buried so that he might make satisfaction for me and pay what I owe, not with silver or gold, but with his own precious blood. And he did all this in order to become my Lord. He did none of these things for himself, nor did he have any need for redemption. After that, he rose again from the dead, swallowed up and devoured death, and finally ascended into heaven and assumed the government at the Father's right hand. He did these things so that the devil and all powers must be subject to him and lie at his feet, until finally, at the last day, he will completely divide and separate us from the wicked world, the devil, death, sin, and such. Yes, the entire gospel that we preach is based on this point, that we properly understand this article as that, as that upon which our salvation and all our happiness rests. It is so rich and complete that we can never learn it fully. Large Catechism, second part. The Apostles' Creed, paragraph 31 33. All right. Uh, what do we do next? We do the Apostles' Creed next. That's what we do next. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Thursday morning, the day has dawned, O Father in heaven, and everywhere your children are lifting holy hands to you for strength for the day and cheer on the road. Let my prayers be acceptable to you for the sake of Christ, my Savior, through whose merits my peace has been made with you. Let the day star rise in my heart, O Lord, by faith in that Savior through whom my place with you is assured forevermore. I beseech you, let not only my prayer, but also my whole life, my every act, thought, and word be a sacrifice to you this day, unblemished and worthy through the power of your Spirit. Let the message of your word fill me with the assurance of the forgiveness of my sin. Let the counsel of your revealed will point out to me the way I am to go. Let your spirit give me courage and strength to choose the good part of every hour. Hold me in oneness of faith with my fellow Christians and let me be salt that has not lost its saltiness. Keep me yours for the sake of your Son, who is my Lord and my Redeemer, even Christ. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with those who's, who have asked for our prayers, whether their suffering is body, illness, age, or trauma of some kind, especially this day, Pat, Lewis, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Renee, Shazad, Holden, and all who call upon your most holy name. Be with them, Lord, and give them strength in their time of need, and hear their prayers when they call upon them. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. Though all our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you, for into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ keep and preserve you this day. Amen. Well, friends, that ends our daily devotions for this Thursday morning. I got to run. I'm officially late. It's 5 to 9. There's no way I'm going to be on the road to Rhinelander by 9 o'clock. But God's peace be with you. We started early so we could end late. <laughs> we'll see you back here tomorrow for our time together in God's Word, our daily devotions. God's peace be with you.